What's up guys, Bryce Michael RC here and today we're going to show you guys how to take old filament that's brittle and breaking and turn it into good filament, printable good filament. Now I got these old filaments here that you guys know they've been setting out in my garage and it, <laughs> funny thing is, is I wanted it for this specific purpose because inside my house it's, it's pretty controlled, it's not too bad. If it gets old, no matter what, if you don't have it in a really controlled environment and in a bag or in a um, just a space where no moisture is going to get to it, eventually it is going to going to get this way, old and brittle. I know you may think that the reason why PLA or ABS or anything is getting brittle is because it's the lack of moisture, because that kind of makes sense in your head, but no, it's actually more moisture makes the plastic worse. And I made a video about the TPU because TPU soaks in moisture a lot easier than PLA does, but PLA does eventually bring in moisture. And I wanted to make this video, I took an already existing brittle PLA and an older PLA and I put them both in the garage, knowing that throughout the time it was going to make them even more brittle and show you guys, you know, learn you guys a thing or two. Um, so anyways, I've got this PLA here, you guys can see this, this is a test roll that they sent me uh, to do a review video on, and let me find the end of it here, I'm going to show you just how brittle this is, PLA should not be like this, and watch all I got to do is start bringing it back, oh, hold on, it's, it's really not flexible at all, there we go, start bringing it back, and it just breaks right off. You don't want to put something like that through your extruder. Um, and into your 3D printer because for one, and I've had this happen before not realizing that the PLA was just too brittle to run and what kept happening is I would print and then I would leave the print and I'd come back and the print would be say it would have like a space like this between it where it had just stopped printing and I thought maybe something was wrong with the extruder, it was losing heat or something but no, this was actually breaking in the extruder and so the one piece would go as far as it could go and then the other side wouldn't follow it up because it would have snapped off and, and broke uh, and after a little bit of it starts snapping off like that anywhere in this roll can snap just as easily as the beginning parts of this um, so you, you just don't want to risk it because you're going to have to constantly watch it with an eagle eye number two you don't want to go in through your hot end because imagine plastic with a bunch of moisture in it going directly into your hot end at 230 degrees Celsius, what's going to happen is it's going to create steam immediately and it's going to cause clumping and it can cause clogs inside of your extruder, which can cause a backup, which could then cause a chain reaction and cause a break. So no matter what you do, you do not want to print and it's not going to be a good quality when it, when it gets done and goes through. It's not. You can get burn marks in it and stuff. So you don't want to print with brittle PLA. So I'm going to show you guys. We're going to be using PLA today. I already did a video on moisture in TPU and I might do another one in ABS. Now you can, you can use a de dehumidifier, which would be probably one of the best ways to do this, or you can use an oven. And I'm going to put the specs for the oven right up here. You want to go to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is for uh, Celsius, but you guys can definitely go in and Google that. Google will automatically transfer it over. <laughs> and you want to put it in for a few hours. So if it's super brittle like this one, I would say probably around like five hours, you know. Um, these two aren't nearly as brittle, but I think I'm just going to put the whole thing in at five hours. Five to six hours seems to be a good time that you guys can do it. What you really want is to get that heat to be able to go throughout the entire thing. So the more plastic you put in, the longer you're going to want to put it in for. Actually, this could probably only go in for a couple hours because I'm not really putting all that much in it. I was going to put more in it, but the more you put in, the more time you want to put it in for because you want that heat to get all the weight in through every bit and these are kind of spread out there's a lot of air between so I think these are going to heat up fairly quickly and that moisture is going to dissipate fairly quickly so I think we're going to put it in for about four hours and then we're going to test it and what I'm going to do is just set it in the oven just like this on the middle rack and we're going to put it in for um, a few hours. 
So I did a lot of my airbrushing in the kitchen. <laughs> and a lot of my uh, base painting, the uh, primering here in the kitchen. And so you can you can tell that my oven has like a light dusting. Well, mine goes, that's about as low as it goes, it's 170. Which is gonna be fine. So we'll just put it in there for less time. I'll probably put it in for an hour, because 170 is, still isn't gonna melt it. it. It'll be just fine. But like I said, I'm putting it at 170. This is gonna be perfectly fine. As long as you keep it under 200 degrees Celsius, you know, you'll be completely A-OK, -okay, which 200 degrees Celsius is like 400 degrees, so. I mean, you could even put this up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit if you wanted to. Uh, just, just keep it under and just do less time. The best specs for this though is probably anywhere from 113 to 115 for about five to six hours, half a day, or you can leave it in for a whole day or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna place this in here. This on top is my one to test, test it. I'm not gonna put both rolls in currently because it feels to the touch a little hotter than I want it to be. Um, but it only breaks down to being 65 degrees Celsius. So that's actually really good. It shouldn't melt it, but PLA is one of those things that you just don't want to heat up. So 170 should be good, but we're gonna we're gonna test it first because I mean you really should be putting it at about 115 between 113, 115, maybe even 120, but 170. We'll put it in for a couple hours and then kind of test it out and see what it's like. So as you can see, um, that was enough to melt the roll thing. I mean, it didn't melt the plastic itself, but it melted the roll. So obviously I was wrong in the material of the actual roll itself. But I only put it in for 30 minutes and I seen the roll start to go and this started to become very, very flexible and pliable. So I went ahead and took it out after 30 minutes and then I tested it and it seems to be perfectly fine. No more brittleness. I mean, it takes a lot to bend it. I'm bending it like crazy. And it's just like regular PLA. So, it's not breaking, you can see. And I did the same thing, uh, it's usually easier to break the higher you go up. You can see I did the same thing to the end here, this is the one that broke the easiest. And it just was not wanting to break. So. to have gotten all the moisture out of it. Doesn't look pretty, but 30 minutes at 170 seems to be just about right. So that should print perfectly fine. I think I got another one in there, that last one in there now. I think will probably be the best idea uh, if yours doesn't go down to like 115, 113, somewhere around there. And if yours goes down to only 170 or something, what I'm doing with the last one is I got it to one, the 170, and then I turned it off, and then I placed the roll in there. So it's going to be in there until it gets cool again. So that should dry it right out. But I, I just think that's wild that that melted the uh, roll. But PLA has such a such a low temperature for melting and it didn't melt the, the actual PLA itself. I think that's wild. That's pretty cool. Didn't take very long. Didn't take as long as I thought it would be. So um, all these people that are getting the food dehydrators and taking five, six hours to dehydrate their uh, PLA, that's just too long. 30 minutes tops is what it took me. I just don't have a pretty roll anymore. <laughs> So that seemed to be a better idea. Um, put it in, put it at 170, then turn the oven off. And this one was more brittle than that one. These uh, silk PLAs tend to get brittle quick. 
And here comes the moment of truth, the test. You can see that other one, whenever I bent it, you can go back and you can see a stress mark in the top whenever I bent it. This one doesn't even have a stress mark in the top. So, in the back. Now we're getting kind of a stress mark in it. Sorry. Got out of frame. So that seems to be the better, more accurate way um, to dry out PLA. Now remember, this was only out in the garage in condensation for a month. So this isn't like a one year, eight year, you know, like on Maker's Muse, you did a, a seven year PLA or something like that. This isn't that long. So if you've just had your PLA out, you haven't used it in a while, like a month or two, this is probably a really good option. Just go in, dry it out, and then do what I do and use it real quick. I don't like to have PLA go to waste. And so what I tend to do is, if I have some rolls like this just sitting around and I'm making something that's gonna get bondoed and, and covered completely and I'm not really worried about the actual print layers themselves, like the helmets and stuff that I make, uh, I try to use up the ones that I have the least amount of, so I'll, I'll be putting this one on uh, on the next print and getting that one completely finished off. And then I'll be finishing this one off because that's the second least. Uh, well, probably that one. And I'll just switch them out while it's extruding. And then uh, I'll finish up that white roll there before I go back to the blue. So even though that baby blue is awesome and it would look like a great print, it's not going to stay baby blue the entire time. And that's a really good, that Solotech, I'm going to do a straight Solotech video one of these days because this is one of my favorite uh, filaments, cheap filaments of all time and they got some really good colors. So anyways, my name is Bryce Michael RC, hit that subscribe button, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos, Hope you, hopefully everybody out there has learned something from this today. If you have any other ways that you guys dry out your PLA certainly leave it in the comments. There's a ton of different ways to do a ton of different things when it comes to 3D printing. People have their own ways of doing stuff. If you have any other suggestions or ideas, leave it in the comments, let us know. And if you have any ideas for future videos, something for me to test out or see if it works, definitely let me know in the comments. I appreciate everybody out there. I'll see you guys later, have a good one.